welcome to today's lecture uh, we shall discuss briefly on certain other important types of hydrothermal uh, systems and the resulting hydrothermal deposit we'll be looking at the sediment hosted massive sulfide deposits uh, which are uh, uh, abbreviated as this sms the sediment hosted massive sulfide deposit in uh, kind of uh, uh, analogous to what we say is the volcanogenic massive sulphide as VMS. So, these deposits we call as the sediment hosted massive sulphide deposits or the SMS. They have been variously named, they were they were for some time they were the deposits which were known as this ZX type of deposit or the syn sedimentary exhalative type of deposits, meaning that the process is not purely a sedimentary the, the deposit the deposit mineralization is not because of the process of sedimentation in addition to the sedimentation in the sedimentary basin some something else or some other component is required to form the minerals the sulfide minerals we pre, pre, they can be we prefer to call them as the sms the way we have been naming the hydrothermal systems so, let us have a look as to what their characteristics are. So, the sediment hosted massive sulphide deposit are a very important class of deposit contributing uh, majority of the lead and zinc resources of the world. The famous deposits are the very well known deposit they are in fact distributed in all almost all the continents and they are uh, uh, quite rich in terms of their uh, quantity in tonnage contributing uh, most of lead and zinc. The Sullivan deposit in Canada is one of the one which is uh, worth mentioning. Mount Isa uh, mineralizing system in, uh, in Queensland in Australia and also the MacArthur river basin in Australia, Rammelsberg in Germany, the iris deposits and some important occurrences in India where there is still some debates but there could be also included under this the Zawar, Raspura, Dariba the, in the northwestern India in the Arabali fold belt these deposits like uh, Zawar, the Raspura, Dariba lead and zinc deposit they also are included in this, this category and they are a very important class of deposits. So, the mineralization is dominantly in marine or continental uh, sediments pyritic carbonaceous shale or platform carbonates with sometimes the uh, a presence of a tufaceous horizon is also there. They are essentially stratiform in nature as could be seen from this diagram and uh, this is a typical uh, idealized morphology like the one which we showed for VMS. This is an idealized morphology for an SMS where we can we see that there are some syn sedimentary uh, basinal fault which is invariably present and there is a brexited uh, zone which is also present and there are proximal uh, sulphide mineralization in the form of the sedimentary hydrothermal facies where sphalerite, galena, pyrite, pyrotite, chalcopyrite uh, mineralization associated here and also a distal facie sedimentary facies barite, carbonate and these are in terms of uh, the grade they are uh, rather uh, lean type of mineralization or low grade whereas, the proximal one is the rich mineralization and uh, uh, there are some post or sediment free rocks. So, what exactly is observed is that the sulphide body is pretty conformable is very much conformable with the sedimentary strata. This is like what we get in the VMS one deposits this is the pre or sediment free rocks uh, constituting of the different facies. This is the feeder pipe and this is the vent complex this one which is shown as a cross H here is the vent complex and this is how is the general morphology of the SMS deposit. They can be called a stratiform mineralization and uh, although the ore minerals are not exactly deposited as plastics on the basin and they do have a have their limitation. The lateral zoning is prominent, but not the vertical one and they are always associated with syn sedimentary fault and 
Uh, one of the important point of distinction here is that just about uh, sometimes a little bit of a thin presence of thin two phases horizon, they are not associated with any significant or prominent magmatic member or magmatic component. The morphology of the ore body uh, could be very well seen here. This, this uh, section is from the Sullivan deposit in Canada, where you could see the sulphide ore very well conformable to the sedimentary strata. <coughs> so, different uh, uh, horizons are present and it has a very prominent uh, zone which is a, a, a brexiated zone here which is shown by this, uh, this is the chaotic brexia zone which we just saw in a generalized morphology and uh, a conglomerate horizon here. And uh, sometimes there are some basement mafic uh, uh, member as gabbro which is present in the Sullivan deposit as you see as you, as you can see here. Uh, this is kind of a generalized mor conforming to the uh, generalized morphology is one of the important uh, deposits uh, SMS deposit in Canada. So, the attributes are uh, the typically one or more ore bodies, ore bodies can be multiple, the layering defined by monomeric layers of hydrothermal minerals millimeter to tens of millimeter in thickness and the average zinc grade can be high can go up to even 10 percent or sometimes can go up to even 19 percent lead going to 1 to 4 percent maximum 11 percent. And uh, in, com in contrast or in uh, in contrast to the VMS deposits, there the hydrothermal alteration which we see is very prominent in the feeder pipe is rather very subtle in this SMS type of deposits. So, the origin is syngenetic exhalative because uh, we need to have uh, some component because this, this sediment sedimentary faces that we are showing the sedimentary origins. They may not be may not be actual contributor of the metal and we need to have the metal uh, source coming from somewhere. These deposits unlike the VMS deposits where we see or we can do fluid inclusion work uh, this this type of deposits do not provide much of uh, scope to do fluid inclusion work because there is no much of accompanying a uh, gang mineral like quartz which is present which where the fluid inclusion work could be done. So, the ore fluid temperature constraint from mostly from the isotope data which range from about 100 to 300 degrees Celsius and this itself tells that a three up temperature up to 300 degrees Celsius can only be achieved if there is some input of heat uh, from the subsurface and the salinity of the fluid is rather low to moderate 10 to 23 watt percent NaCl that is coming from the iris deposits. So, the hydrothermal system to be could be visualized to be anything of a flow of basinal fluid along a pressure gradient or could be thermally driven convection or could be gravity driven flow. Uh, so, in this case of a uh, flow of basinal fluid here the temperature of the fluid is uh, definitely is expected to be not that very high, but only that there must be some kind of a situation. Uh, where the sedimentary uh, strata have been compressed and the basinal fluid must have been squeezed out in a pressure gradient and those fluid by virtue of their higher salinity could have uh, dissolved as appreciable amount of the metal and to have deposited uh, in the uh, locales as it is shown. So, mechanism of ore accumulation is rather unclear as are the source of metal and sulphur. Paleotectonic settings in this they are likely to be in the intercontinental rift, continental margin side of the back arc or the passive continental margins with transected by rift where exactly we can explain the situation of the squeezing of this basinal fluid if it happens to be a passive continental margin transected by a rift. And uh, so, uh, sometimes the metal uh, when we get such kind of two even though thin two horizon they could 
also be a source of the metal or the metal could have been sourced from somewhere deeper or uh, more efficient the, the, the situation where we uh, visualize the system to be a thermally driven convection there it becomes uh, more explainable, but situation remains a little bit uh, less clear when the over fluid temperature is low although we know that a contact fluid can always be a met carrier of metal and the deposition of the metals can take place and we see the temperature range going down to as low as 100 degree centigrade is explainable and uh, fits to the model. Uh, so, that is all about uh, the information that we could uh, give about the SMS deposits. So, this is a conceptual model for the exhalative uh, conceptual model for SMS deposit, where the hydrothermal fluid could be squeezed from the reservoir rock, which is the reaction zone, could be RNSCS, RGSS rock, this is the hydrothermal fluid and this hydrothermal fluid will rise and which is shown in this is the feeder zone the hydrothermal alteration will be will be very moderate or subtle here and this is the vent complex of the massive sulfide dexia and vein and this is the distal this is the proximal uh, stratiform sulfide and the distal which we uh, saw in the typical morphology of the this is one of the one such model but one can always imagine analogous to a situation what it happens in case of a vulcanogenic massive sulphide that there could be some uh, magmatic activity, some volcanic activity which could be there in the subsurface providing the heat and because this fluid has to uh, be buoyant and has to be compressed and move through this and also it must acquire. So, it also depends on the volume of the uh, rock that is involved. Uh, it would require if it if the metal has to be only be derived from this sedimentary pile then it definitely would require a far greater amount of the rock to be involved and the fluid to be uh, squeezed out from this sedimentary horizon and to be channelized through such kind of uh, system as, as shown here. Uh, here is a co uh, brief comparison of the temporal uh, spectrum of these deposits. They, even though they range from early Proterozoic to end of the Paleozoic, so they are, uh, the density of occurrence, frequency of occurrence is far more within the within the Proterozoic, com as compared to or uh, unlike the volcanogenic massive sulphide deposits which range in age from Archean to Cenozoic. These deposits are not found to occur in rocks which are younger than Paleozoic, the Mesozoic and Cenozoic sedimentary basins uh, seem to be devoid of these deposits uh, which is uh, the reason is not very well known why is it so, but there is an observational fact. Okay, from uh, now we uh, begin uh, now we, we switch over to another very important uh, class of hydrothermal deposit which are the sediment hosted stratiform copper deposit the or the ssc deposit these deposits are a major contributor of copper they possibly next to the porphyry copper deposits accounting for 20 to 25 percent of the world's copper production and the more important they are also a resource of cobalt and the uh, the occurrences two important occurrences can be quoted as far as this important deposit type is concerned. The one is the, the uh, Zambian copper belt in Africa which is a huge uh, copper bearing uh, essentially they are copper bearing black shales they are reduced uh, reduced horizon zone of reduced uh, uh, conditions where metal sulphides uh, have formed or deposited and the other one which is shown here is known as the Kufer Schiffer which is essentially a black shell copper bearing black shell horizon and it is a very unusual situation where this particular horizon has a total area of coverage about more than 600,000 square kilometer 
distributed over about 7 countries in central Europe, Germany, Poland, uh, even going to the uh, to UK uh, and this is a it is not of course, this be this uh, prominent horizon which is a copper bearing black shell is not uh, being worked or workable mines are not there, they are definitely some very uh, selected areas especially the uh, uh, where it is exposed in Poland and some other areas where they are being very actively uh, recovered exploited for the metal copper and co cobalt. The ore is in reduced origin black shale with associated continental red beds and evaporites. The association with continental red bed is very, uh, very uh, prominent and very critical uh, to the situation of the SSC deposits as well as the evaporites, because the evaporites uh, bear a little bit of significance as far as the hydrothermal system in general are concerned. Most of our ideas coming from the uh, situation which prevails in the Red Sea, where the fluid is essentially a very concentrated briny fluid much more in salinity than average sea water, because uh, these, these fluids are supposed to be derived by the dissolution of these evaporite beds, which are the beds of the salt, which result because of the evaporation of sea water in landlocked basins. And they are predominantly stratiform, even far more uh, stratiform characteristics than the SMS and much larger lateral extent. They are fine grained disseminated copper sulphides, chalcosite, bornite, chalcopyrite, some amount of significant lead, zinc and silver. This mineralogy is very characteristic in this sense that the minerals like chalcosite or this digenite and uh, copper rich type of minerals, which are generally observed in low temperature environments or in the super gene uh, sulphide enrichment kind of zone in existing deposits. These are the kind of mineralogy which dominates the stratiform sedimentary sedimentary stratiform copper deposits like what we see in the Cooper Schiffer or the Zambian copper belt. And there is no associated volcanics and there is prominent lateral and vertical zoning that is also observed in these ores. So, mineralogically it is a copper rich system, average copper grade varying from 1 to 5 percent. The proposed genetic models are this is syn sedimentary or syn diagenetic, because uh, the syn sedimentary uh, process which we just have just seen in case of the SMS deposit is a very efficient mechanism that during the process of sedimentation there is some uh, extra input in terms of fluid or the metal from another source which can make the uh, minerals deposit along with the sedimentary strata. And the other one is the seen diagenetic in the sense that the deposit formation is, uh, is, is follows the stage of compaction and uh, very low temperature uh, situation in which the minerals start to reconstitute or some of the very, very low grade metamorphic uh, low grade uh, um, mineral start to form. So, the seen sedimentary is akin to an oxy water column that is prevailing in the black sea because uh, the situation could be compared to a stratified black sea where we see that the lower lowermost part is very 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 reducing and using the kind of uh, environment in which the sulphide the metal sulphides can precipitate and as layers so it could be a situation like that the syn sedimentary where even uh, no extra uh, it will only be coming out because of the very high dissolving power of such uh, kind of water, some such kind of very low uh, and uh, low pH and reducing fluid, which can uh, accommodate or can dissolve a lot of metals, which we see in the present situation in Black Sea. So, the ore fluid is always a low temperature fluid less than 100 degrees Celsius, but still we can put them in the category of uh, hydrothermal. There, the association with red bed is important because uh, the fluid must have been at some point of time in equilibrium with uh, hematite must have been oxidizing and the uh, appropriate pH uh, that is constant by carbonate equilibrium means pH uh, need to be a little high at least stability field of bicarbonate or carbonate. So, that such kind of an oxidate, oxidizing fluid will be able to uh, dissolve and uh, transport 
uh, appreciable amount of the metals. Salinity as I just mentioned as the overlying evaporite beds have contributed to the high salinity of this uh, hydrothermal fluid and for the efficient transport of metals. The ore accumulation is in response to decreasing oxidation state of the fluid on encountering the reduced zone which is the black shales which uh, are enriched with carbonaceous uh, particles and they create a reducing zone where the sulphides could favorably be deposited. And uh, sometimes these, uh, how these uh, sedimentary strata are also uh, associated or overlie thick mafic volcanic more like the source of and which could possibly provide the metals than the marine sediments. Red beds with mafic detritus and other uh, are the other possible source. We see uh, even though we do not see a very prominent uh, magmatic component here, but the we see the mafic members as detritus within the sedimentary horizon and they could possibly contribute because we know that copper can come from a basaltic kind of a source uh, much more than it can come from any sedimentary horizon like a shale or a sandstone. So, that could also so the red beds and the uh, detrital mafic uh, components are also potential metal uh, contributors in this part in this kind of system which give rise to the stratiform sedimentary copper deposits. And the paleotectonic setting uh, they are very uh, very much expected to be in continental drift settings that resulted in the elongated sediment field depressions bounded by normal fault. And the this SSC deposits are absent in Archean much like the SMS seems to be controlled by the first appearance of red beds. That is uh, one of the very significant aspect of these deposits that uh, they, they, they never formed in the Archean in the where we know that the condition or the because of the very low partial pressure of oxygen the conditions were much more reducing and which might not have been able to uh, create a system where you need an oxidizing condition for the efficient transport of the metals and then deposition uh, in reduced zones. So, that is how they are uh, lacking in the Archean and the first appearance of the red beds seems to be an important uh, uh, important controlling factor in formation of these deposits. So, this uh, in this particular series of the uh, hydrothermal systems which are associated with sedimentary rocks, the another important class is the Mississippi Valley type of deposits which are also the major contributor of lead and zinc in the world. And, uh, this, this diagram is a composite diagram which shows all the possible conditions in which we can see this MVT type of ores forming. Situation 1, it could be a solution collapse brexia related to karstification that means that these are essentially the cavities in the limestone which we call them as the casts and there could be deposition of this sulphides, metal sulphides of lead and zinc. The situation 2 could be it is a collapse structure resulting from thinning of underlying beds and subsurface drainage. And uh, here it could be a facies change with or without reef at boundary relation to unconformities. Uh, here I mean it is not exactly known whether they are related to unconformities, but there is a facies change in the sedimentary horizon and they seem to have been controlled by this process. They could be on a basement high as on this here as it is shown here, the mud bank or the talus or pinch out kind of structure, grape kind of structure and the reef in the uh, limestone. So, essentially this Mississippi valley type deposit, the MVT type deposits are characteristically hosted in carbonate rocks and uh, there could be many different possible uh, locales in which the ores could be localized, could be the deposition of the ores could be controlled. The main attributes of uh, the Mississippi Valley type deposits is they are hosted by unmetamorphosed platform carbonate. This uh, sequence they are just not, uh, they do not show any indication of the getting metamorphosed and the 
most preferred horizon is basically the dolo stones, the carbonate rocks, the strata bound. So, strata bound generally indicates that that need not have to be seen sedimentary or uh, they need not have to be seen genetic, they are rather more uh, likely to be epigenetic that means, the mineralization being uh, uh, temporarily away temp temporarily uh, different or younger to the to the formation of the um, host carbonate rocks. Mineralogy is simple low iron sphalerite, galena, fluorite, barite. In fact, these are the deposits from which the uh, most of the fluid inclusion data uh, on these sphalerites have come, because the low iron sphalerites are um, far more amenable to fluid inclusion studies, because of their transparent characteristics and they provide important inputs to the fluid characteristics. The mineralization is prominently cavity filling type as we have seen, whether it is a cast or it is a phase change or the situation to be created for the deposition of the sulphides. The, uh, the, range in the, the, the range in age from proterozoic to Cretaceous widely distributed in North America, but dominantly Paleozoic. There are some Australian occurrences as well and this uh, as I just said that there are ample scope for reconstruction of the fluid characteristic from fluid inclusion studies and uh, the fluid inclusion studies indicate a very high density, but low temperature uh, fluid of 80 to 220 degrees centigrade. And this uh, deposits the ore fluid is very, very ca characteristic in, in the sense that they do have appreciable hydrocarbon concentration the dominant the generally the fluid inclusions when we see we see a very significant component of methane there and there are also uh, heavier hydrocarbons are detected and uh, uh, they almost look uh, like almost oil filled brines and uh, the temperature is low from 80 to 200 degrees and 220. The fluid is inferred to be basinal that migrated for long distance and no clear indication with reef type. So, here corresponding to the penultimate point it is very interesting. In fact, these are the deposits from which the concept of the long distance migration of connate fluid was proposed, because of the fact that the uh, fluid characteristics did not quite match with any fluid that could possibly be generated from the host carbonate rocks and the carbonate rocks show good degree of replacement uh, in during the mineralization. And, uh, uh, and then there are many uh, many ideas that were proposed like whether the metal and the sulphur were carried together or the metal and the sulphur were derived from different types of fluid and uh, those detailed discussion is out of uh, scope for this discussion, but they are a very interesting case and this uh, hypothesis is still being held that the Mississippi Valley type deposits are result of. Uh, so, this uh, would actually mean that there must have been some kind of tectonic activity uh, could have driven the fluid out of the sedimentary horizons from one particular local and then migration of the fluid either uh, uh, through a gravity type of flow or because compaction driven flow. Uh, but since they are basinal connate fluid they will be uh, the salinity will be high and uh, they could be they are very uh, potent uh, potential metal uh, contributor they have lots of metal like uh, zinc uh, and lead could be complex in such kind of chloride rich uh, fluid and these deposits also uh, the possibility of metals getting complex in uh, organic complexes like uh, some organic ligands uh, being more prominent in the fluid for the dip for the transportation of lead is also been proposed okay so with this we conclude the discussion with this put this uh, range of uh, hydrothermal deposits the volcanogenic massive sulfide deposit the sediment hosted massive sulfide deposit the sedimentary stratiform copper deposit and the mississippi valley type deposits they they exhibit uh, many different types of uh, situations but somehow they do have some uh, features which can be compared like for example a distal type uh, VMS and an SMS deposit could possibly 
be having the similar type of morphology and attributes and uh, so that is how they make a good case of uh, um, comparing them in terms of the ore fluid involvement of connate fluid for the mineral for uh, transportation and deposition of the sulphides. So, they these four they constitute a very interesting and important uh, class of deposits which have generated enough of academic interest in addition to the fact that they have been major contributor of metals base metals like copper lead and zinc. Thank you.